And this morning, investigators in Lakeside are looking into the death of a man on a hiking trail. Thanks for being here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Rampour. So this happened at the El Capitan hiking trail last night. Authorities say a man in his late 20s was hiking with a group. He'd been complaining of symptoms of heat exhaustion. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol live at the trail now with the very latest. Good morning, Dana Marie. Good morning, Eric and Nenna. First responders did everything they could to save his life, but his symptoms were just too far gone. Now, officials tell us this all happened here at the El Capitan hiking trail around 645 last night, and some of those symptoms include feeling really dizzy and thirsty, and the group that he was hiking with realized how bad his condition was, quickly called 911. Uh, yesterday, a helicopter was actually initially deployed, but now we're learning that it was shortly canceled because once first responders arrived here on scene, they found that man in CPR status, pulseless and not breathing. And uh, he did pass away here in the El Capitan hiking trail. Now with warmer temperatures, of course, on the way, we know that it is so important to prevent any type of heat exhaustion. Here are some of the symptoms to watch out for. If people are dizzy, excessive sweating, cool, call me, uh, clammy, excuse me, pale skin, and possibly nausea and or vomiting. Heat stroke is much more serious. Signs include severe headache, confusion, and a change in behavior. The body also stops sweating and will feel hot to the touch. Now, when this happens, of course, bring somebody water, but tell them not to chug it. Get them inside, cool down, and perform active cooling mechanisms like ice packs on the armpits and groin area, and sometimes even behind the neck, maybe a cool compress on the head. Now, the Lakeside Fire Fire Protection District officials told us that it's important to note even though weather conditions may be cloudy and not appear hot, hikers should still be prepared with plenty of water. Uh, you know, this is a tragic situation, something we never want to report. Someone just going out enjoying the nature here in Lakeside uh, and of course ending in a very, very sad way. In terms of that investigation, they're still looking into his death, but all signs do point to heat stroke and heat exhaustion. For any further updates or more tips on how to prevent this, you could always head to CBS8.com. I'm Dana Marie McNichol. I'll send it back to you. Over the last couple of days, Border Patrol agents have detained hundreds of migrants near our border. Title 42 is set to expire next Thursday, and agents believe this is what's causing the influx. CBS 8's Chris Grow live in San Isidro to explain what will happen here when Title 42 is no longer in effect. And Eric, what we're being told right now is that what will happen is that once Title 42 expires on May 11th, Title 8 will take its place and border officials will begin to enforce laws under that policy. Now, under that directive, if and when migrants are caught crossing the border illegally, they can and will be deported, but then also if they are caught enough times or even uh, just that first time, those caught could be banned from reapplying for asylum for up to five years. So some heavy consequences there. The Department of Homeland Security says that they are preparing for up to 13,000 migrants to cross the border per day once Title 42 expires. As for San Diego and local Border Patrol, they say that they are getting ready. They've directed all of their resources to the issue. That includes beefing up staffing for screening and processing migrants attempting to uh, declare for asylum. However, immigration activists say that migrant shelters aren't able to keep up and there are a host of other issues also plaguing uh, this human rights uh, issue. So here's immigration rights activist Enrique Morones on the topic. Uh, the smugglers will often say, you know, get on up, that there's room for you at the shelters, just show up at the line and say that you're claiming asylum. That's not the way it works. And uh, so the shelters don't know what to do. Yeah, so you see you hear again there uh, Maron is commenting about how uh, sometimes smugglers again are giving some of these migrants the wrong information and then with the potential uh, consequences there for Title VIII setting them up uh, for failure essentially when trying to uh, seek asylum. Now, uh, for more information on Title VIII as well as what will happen uh, once Title 42 does expire, you can go to CBS8.com and click on that story link. Eric and Netta.
All right, Chris Gro, thank you for the update live at our border. And now new this morning, we are hearing from the former MTS employee accusing Nathan Fletcher of sexual assault. Grecia Figueroa posted on a blog Saturday. She expresses frustration for the treatment she experienced since coming forward with her allegations. So in this blog post, she writes in part, it's no wonder people feel they'll be judged when speaking up about sexual harassment if seeking vindication of one's own rights leads them to be called a liar, a mistress, a gold digger, and far worse names. She did not address Fletcher or her lawsuit against him in her post. Fletcher has denied these allegations. He says the interactions were consensual. He will step down from the County Board of Supervisors on May 15th. And tomorrow, the Board of Supervisors will decide if they'll appoint a replacement or hold a special election. Today would have been Maya Miliete's 42nd birthday. This mother from Chula Vista has been missing since January of 2021. Over the weekend, her friends and family celebrated her life at Fiesta Island. It's what she would have wanted, the family together, the kids together, the cousins, the nephews, everybody together, just, you know, mama and papa. While Maya's body has never been found, her husband, Larry Miliete, is accused of murdering her. His trial is scheduled to start October 9th. This morning, the city of San Diego's new short-term rental rules are in effect. Everyone who owns a rental property will now need a permit. There are four license types. Tier 1 is for homeowners who rent their place out for less than 20 days a year. Tier 2 is for owners who rent out rooms and live on site. Both of those can be obtained at any time. Tier 3 is for homeowners everywhere except for Mission Beach that want to rent out their whole home for more than 20 days a year without living there. And then Tier 4 only applies to Mission Beach. There were, those were capped at around 1,100. Almost 200 people are now on a wait list. <laughs> <laughs> Padres celebrated with a pinata after sweeping the Giants in Mexico City. Friars won 6-4 to four yesterday, a day after winning an 11 home run thriller, 16-11. <laughs> to 11. Today they return home to face the Cincinnati Reds. It is the first time fans will see Fernando Tatis Jr. play in San Diego after that 80-game suspension back in 2021. Today's game at 6.40. PM. We are uh, one mm -hmm. game behind the leader in NL West, which is a tie between the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers okay. right now. Okay, yeah, that was a looked like a fun it weekend. Did. I yes. just kept watching Jake and For Shannon, that many runs, and Padres. That is wild. Yeah, because yeah. it was so high up, right? Yeah. In elevation, the it's ball amazing. just takes off and. <laughs> It, it, it was so impressive. Here. I know I didn't yeah. even think I, I didn't even know Mexico City was that high yeah. in elevation. Over 7, so when I heard feet the score, up. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, never been to Mexico City. But now I'm like, geez, I got to add it to the list. Right. It seems like a fun place to go. Uh, hey, let's take a look at the forecast as we start off your new week. It is going to be a gray week. It is going to be a breezy week. And by Thursday, it could even be a rainy week. So we start off with Monday, of course. Dense marine layer builds along the coast and inland. We're already seeing quite a bit of drizzle. Most of our cameras are showing a bit of uh, rain on the lens. We're seeing those clouds pull back steadily from your inland valleys toward the coastline, but it looks like along the coast we will probably hold on to that dense marine layer for a good portion of the day. 61 along the coast, 62 inland is what we're expecting. Uh, satellite radar not doing the greatest job of picking up on the drizzle just because of how light it is in most spots, but you can can see a bit of green on the screen and that cloud layer that we are working through. Rain chances are going to peak on Thursday. Thursday holds the best opportunity for about uh, two tenths of an inch up to a half an inch. Half an inch is about what we'll see for your mountaintops and above 6,000 feet. That could also translate to some snow. But between now and Wednesday, we're going to hold on to light drizzle in the early morning hours at many uh, locations that will be below uh, accumulation level below one one hundredth of an inch. But this morning we are seeing some wet roads. So there is a good chance that today will lead to actual totals, accumulated totals as opposed to just trace amounts. Uh, Julian, we're going to see those wind gusts pick up from the mid 20 mile per hour range all the way to the mid 30 mile per hour range. So uh, each afternoon moving forward, especially across the mountains and deserts, you're going to notice an increase in those wind gusts and sustained speeds, mainly westerly winds out there. But a live look outside shows you how gust, how, uh, how overcast it is. It is gusty though across those mountains and deserts. This is from La Jolla though, facing east. And again, most of our cameras do show a little bit of uh, gloom out there related to sometimes that 
drizzle that's on the lens of the camera. And then we also have some cameras that are pointed right down on the roads and those roads are showing wet roads to start. So speaking of which, let's take a look at traffic as we start off your uh, new week. Then here's a look at your border wait times from CBP. Uh, right now, the wait at the San Ysidro Port of Entry, 70 minutes. Otay Mesa Port of Entry, 70 minutes as well. So both are at just over an hour making your way through. Once you get onto our roads in San Diego County, uh, you will likely see that rain and uh, that dampness across it. So do keep in mind that this is going to be a daily occurrence peaking on Thursday. Back to you.